حور العين تناديني فدعيني أما هدعيني لتبكي دموعك يا أمي عن دربي لا لن تثنيني حور العين تناديني فدعيني أما هدعيني لتبكي دموعك يا أمي عن دربي لا لن تثنيني السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته على اسم الدعاء إن شاء الله المستعد اللهم آمين اللهم أنت السلام ومنك السلام تبارك يا ذا الجلال والإكرام اللهم صل على سيدنا وشفيعنا وحبيبنا ومولانا محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم ربنا زن علما نافعا وعملا متقبلا ورزقا واسعا شفاء من كل داء اللهم ربنا يسر ولا تعس وتم بالخير بك نستعين يا فتح فسبحان ربك رب العزة أما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل لغدة من لساني يفقه قولي so we just start on our topic again Islam and Muslims in the modern world and the challenges faced by youths in this modern society and one of the issues that we stopped on is materialism and materialism is a term that is coined and fashioned around what basically we believe as what we'll say mal or wealth or, or love for the world or love for the affairs of the world. But materialism is a, is, is a grown concept in our, our life today. The fact is that materialism is having wealth, one, and dealing with the maintenance of that wealth how well you handle wealth. So one is to have the wealth and how to deal with the wealth that you have. Some people, the more they have, the more they want and, the, and what they have and the more that they desire, they really can't even use or they really can't even control what they have. When we look at it again, we ask ourselves so how, you know, how our egos and our desires are towards wealth, materially, because do we have a, a, a desire for wealth? Do we see things and want it? Do we have a, a love for things every day in our life that we see? And that's having an ego. A person could love and desire to have something and they will work towards that every day to achieve that. And after achieving that, they realize that that was not really everything that they wanted. They wanted something more. And then they will work harder to even achieve that as well. And then they will go towards that striving and that ego will continue. And that tells us that there is a desire for wealth. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made it clear even to us by definition that that is part of the natural nature of the human beings. That if a man is given one mountain of gold, he will yuhibbu wadi and he will love a second valley of gold. And he will never stop wanting and desiring until his mouth is filled with dirt. Meaning that he can only reach the state of not desire when he dies. He will no longer have a state for desire for until he dies. But that is from the point of view that when we look at it in terms of desire, having, wanting, and that is only natural. The fact that the matter is how much of what we see today in terms of the world and the wealth of the world today, what is its effect and what is its dangers and what it is the end result of our minds and the minds of our children when it comes to the material world today. If we even examine from the very past history, and this is something we have to understand because we have to understand where our children are and where we are when it comes to this. Many, many moons ago we would say that people, their lives were very difficult. Why? We would say that they had to work hard to acquire certain wealth and basic amenities was a big challenge. To have food on your table every day, you had to work the land, you had to prepare, dry your rice, you had to get your wheat, you had to grind your own wheat, you had to do everything without going to what? Basically shop in a grocery as you would see or shop today and just walk with a cart and load everything on the cart and walk out, pay a couple thousand dollars and walk out of the grocery shop today, loaded with every single item and you, you forget anything or everything about what market is. Even though we do market today, we just go call it for what? Shopping for what? Vegetables, basically. And that is what it is. But prior to this type of life, people knew what? Based on necessities, they would work and acquire their wealth. If they wanted milk, 
They didn't know how to find a pack. They would look for a cow and they would get their milk from the cow, not from the pack. And this was the nature of what happened before. So life was difficult, but yet it was simple, but people were, were living. They had their needs fulfilled. They had their basic rights fulfilled, but the desire to fulfill more of that was never there because that was within a capacity and contented with that particular life. So yes, ever since there was always this life of having, eating, working, acquiring a small structure and living according to whatever you could have afforded. But think about that material process. What had transformed over those years? What has made man what they are today as, past, as a part of what has happened in the past? First, by the knowledge that people had gained, certain things started to happen in the world. One, we started to understand how to create and make machines. We looked to the skies, we learned how to what? Develop something to what? Fly. We looked towards the ocean and we started to do more different things and understand different types of ways to extract energy from the earth and gain oil and different types of things. And what happened out of this? industrialization machinery equipment and things started to grow more and more and then for all of these things to happen people needed some means of capital to grow and build all these things so there are some people who had a greater means of wealth and understand how to capitalize and utilize and get more and more out of people so the eventual the whole world changed into a system of people mass producing so if a person starts to what mass produce and start to get wealth in a large abundance they actually work in a factory all this those people all their lives they spend probably 30 40 years working in a factory that's all they know about their life and they started to do that as their job and their job was just knowing that what to do and assemble vehicles or cars or maybe probably work in a place to build bikes or probably build something or the other some part or iron to build for a building or something that's their whole life they spend their whole life doing that. And at the end of that, then they take that money and wealth and they probably purchase food, send their children to school, and they do all different types of things from the little wealth that they had. But if we think about it, when all of these constructions and all these buildings and all these things were going on, you were contributing your labor like millions of other people. And who was really benefiting out of it? Who really take control of what or what you are working for what you what you get in return is some means and some portion of that wealth that will benefit you but the majority of the one let's say 90 percent of the wealth goes back to who and that is the end result the end result is that the wealth is capitalized and controlled by certain groups and elements in any society and that group and element continue to control and make that effect on the way we choose and make choices. So the fact is that, the matter is that we send our children to school. Just think about it. We send them to school, we educate them. To create what? To create what out of our children? That they will be educated and skilled to do a particular job. That is the end result. Isn't that so? You didn't send them to school at the end of it that they will do nothing. You want them to do a particular skill, a particular job. For who? For what? For some person, some company, some place that will benefit out of their labor. And then who ends up getting the majority of that wealth again? The person who hires them. So this is the system that we live in the world today. And we continue contributing and creating and growing our children and educating our children in a system that generally goes towards the material development and improvement of the world materially so everything that we have done is like that and if we would have our governments would speak what do they tell us about majority of that governments would you know implore us for our votes will be for what reason because they are willing to provide us with what road health good schooling free schooling and what else they got offer again Religious services, if they talk about religious services, they don't talk about that. They only talk about things that will what? Work in line with the things that are secularly built. 
Reason being that this is the, the, the nature of the entire system of materialism. Why I talk about this is because we go through this as a cycling life as human beings today. We actually, you know, some people say well, you're playing to the hands of people. But the fact of the matter is that we are all the people who are the majority in the world. We are the ones who actually do majority of the work. And we skill ourselves and we do all of these things to attain what? Do the efforts or are the efforts that we are making towards material progress and material development has it and all the education and all the skills you have learned how happy are the people in the world today you know how comfortable we are out of the material gains and success that we have or is it that it has transformed the lives of people into something being different for example how materialism works and let's understand it from the concept now so we understand how we reach where we are but how does it work that to know that we are really materialistic in a modern society that we live in today a person would buy a brand new car a young man and then fix the entire car for who to see you know he puts on new brand rims he change over this he put on this type of lights and do everything else polishes the entire car have the car shine and looking real good and then puts on loud music and drive down the street. Right? Real hard. As though he cannot hear inside the car what the whole village can hear. Right? What is, the, what is the objective of that? What is the objective of doing all of that? Why would someone sell someone music to such an extent that that is what they want to do with it? The objective is that there is a love, a love for what? Image. I love to, to show people that, you know, I reach, I belong, I see, I see, I see, I see man in the village, I see, I see young boy who have all the, all the ranks in the village. You know, so anybody see that car, you know, especially the young girls or some other people see, well, yeah, look, once they hear the music, everybody run outside to look who this car passing, or, you know, that kind of thing. All that is what? A material show. It was done all for that. And how did he get all that money? Did he get a well just like that? He either work very hard and spend all of it on that material show, or he either what? Become the super parasite and suck all that money out of his what? Mother and father and get what he wants. So instinctly, you know, that, that is the nature of it. For example, a child comes into this world. A child comes into this world. How does the child tell mommy that? I need food. Cry. So he learns to communicate or she learns to communicate. That child learns to communicate and cry and the mother understands the child needs what? Food. Needs to change her clothes. Uncomfortable. Feeling pain. Fever. Child communicates instinctively, nowhere to find what? Breast milk. Understands what to do. All of that. Why? There is an inclination, one, for a natural instinct towards materialism and how to learn to survive. But at the same time, when that becomes different, you understand, there's one aspect of it, instinctly we have to survive. I'm not saying that we what, detach ourselves materialistic from the world. We cannot do that because we need it to survive. But when we become sick, you know, for example, a child supposed to be weaned off at the age of what? Basically two years is the maximum amount. So when that happens... Now, coming off, that is what? Pushing the child away, weaning the child away from being connected to what? That being its main source of food. No, there is something better for you now. But the child doesn't just, it doesn't just happen like, just like that. Who makes the effort to ensure that this happens? The mother has to instinctly what? Give the child that level of what? Separation and detachment and Put the child in a different direction. So it tells us that even in that condition of seeking from the material world, there is a level of direction and focus that we all need to recognize, that we all need to know that there is a limit to how much and what we are in need of for our success, for our benefit, for our natural instincts to be fulfilled. And once that is fulfilled, the natural needs and instincts of the human beings that Allah has created the human being with 
we can sense all these things. We can know all of these things and we know how to protect ourselves, how to feed ourselves, how much we need. But when the instinct comes to the point that it doesn't need it for needs, but needs it for what? Show, then we become materialistic. We become something else, more than just the human being that has a basic need to fulfill. Now it is about what? Acquisition and hoarding and holding and keeping for something, for what? For what purpose? You know, sometimes now today is, you know, like when, what, 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 ad, let's look at, for example, our children in terms of materialistic goals and achievement. You buy a nice phone for them, obviously every two, three months you want to change their phones. Because when a new brand comes out, they want to change that, they want something better. New model phone. And they probably just extend the screen a little bit or something. Whatever you do. But that's the end of the day, a new phone. But what is the real essence of, of looking at what children look at today? How does the media reach to our children to teach them how to love and desire and work towards something? So materialistically, the human mind now is what? Trained to love wealth. Trained to desire. Trained to want more. Because it has been bombarded every day on wealth and capture, being captivated by wealth. So when we look at what the Quran tells us on page 43 in our notes, it tells us that for wealth, it says, what the Quran mentions, it says that in Surah Al Fajr, that's one of the first ayat that human beings, they love. To gather wealth. What to hibbun al mala hubban jama'a. They have a love to attachment and more and more. So that's the first ayah that tells us that. In Surah Al Fajr, Surah number 89, verse 20. A love for wealth. Why? Allah created us like that. But there is the weakness for the love of it. More and more. To gather more. To put more together. And therefore, yes, a person has a phone and it's well. I can I want a new one now and I, I, I really don't want to use that one anymore. But what he has is working. And you say, well, you know, but you have a good working phone. Why do you want to change it for? You know, why change it? <laughs> well, you know, well, everybody in class have a new one like this. Everybody in school have a new one like this. And to hibbun al mala hubban jama'a. That old thing means nothing anymore. Now you desire something better. And that is the the nature of what the world is today, to hibbun al mala hubban jama'a. There are people who will buy items, people who will buy products. This is the material desire. Who would want so much that when they, they buy so much, they barely have place to walk in their house. They have no use for it, they just buy it and put it down there. They would shop for clothing. They have so much that they cannot even use what they have, but they'll never give away what they don't want to use. A love for wealth that is beyond the required amount. Because something looking nice, you know, that a little slight change in the design of the clothes alone. And we want to change it one time. So that is what? Gathering and adding and adding and adding. And then we'll put more and more uh, items come. You see a new set of dishes, you want to change your old dish and put a new set of dishes in your house. So every time you go to shop, and if you look at it today in the world, how it has designed itself. A person would work and then after some time, what do you think they do on a weekend? People, most of their weekend is spent on doing what? Going to a mall, window shopping and shopping. Then they spend on recreation. Whatever we want to spend it on to benefit or relax with. So the wealth is spent on gathering for what purpose and for who? Who benefits? What benefit you serve humankind with out of your wealth? So one of the things Allah SWT says, well, The Today that is the, the trend of what we see around us and our youths are gathering towards that trend. For the desire and the love for wealth. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Alladhi jama'a ma'law wa addada. That until you go down to your graves again, the next ayah that tells us, he says, 
that al hakumu takathur hatta zur tumul maqabir. That one of the conditions is, for firstly, woe to him who amasses wealth. That is the one alladhi jama'u ma'ala wa addada yahsabu ma'alahu akhlada. That he acquires wealth on the count that he'll what? Be safeguarded by his wealth. You know, so today, a person tells you, well, look, you know what? You live in, but you have, to, you have a house and you're still owing on this house. You buy a car, you're still owing on this car. But you know what? If you die, all this thing your children will get, they will be a lawsuit on it. So you know what you have to do now? Take a life insurance. So in case you die, before you pay out for these things, this life insurance will pay out for all of that for you. So you don't have to worry. So your life now, you feel what? Threatened and you feel what? Insecure. And you tell yourself, I have to what? Secure my life. So I have to take out that insurance to secure my life. Now there are certain ulamas who give permission for that. But the thing is, you know, it is way out of control. To hubbun al mala hubban jama'a. How much or to what extent should we live within our means? Or within what we are capable of doing? But today we are taught and sold into the idea is that, you know, real estate is the way, you know, so people will build houses by the hundreds of houses and then sell you one for two million or three million dollars, which you have to take 30 to 40 years of your life to pay for, or in fact, your whole life paying for a house. Right? And when you finish paying your children to pay, so they're telling us that you need to have a property. You need to gather this wealth. Safeguard yourself. You have to safeguard your family. If you don't give them a house, where are they going to end up on? The street. You know, that, that's, that's how the fear comes. That you have to protect your children. If you don't send them to school and they don't get an education, then what's going to happen to them? They're going to end up on the street. They'll be using drugs. But there are many children who go to school and using drugs in the school. And they still end up on the street. So the, the condition is that we are sold into a system of fear. We are sold into a system of fear, material, that we have to have this, we have to have that. And we try to put our lives into that condition. So the Quran is telling us that people will want to gather wealth to, and then protect that wealth and put it under safety and protection. What is the objective? Wealth. And that is what we see today in society, that a time has reached upon us that this is what we are doing. al that they are also what? Vying with each other in the acquisition of wealth. We are vying with each other in the acquisition of wealth. And we see that happening today that when you look at, you know, like the people, is, they have these shows that tells you and shows to you and show to your kids, young boys and young girls, who has the best crib, you know, they call it crib, you know, it's crib, right? Not them baby crib, you know. People who have big mansions, <coughs> multi-million dollar mansions all over the world, big actors and big sports stars and Whatever have you sung, people will sing songs, you know, those big songs, stars and so on. All these people, they show you their, their, their mansions and they show you what they have inside and all these different types of things. Even the big princes and all over the world, you know, all the different types of gold cars and all silver cars and all kind of fancy things they have all over the world. They show it to us, to the world. Why they show it to the world for? To hubbun al mala hubban jama. They vie with each other. Who is the richest person in the world? Don't, we, don't they have that? The 10 richest person in the world? Do they, have, they ever show who is the poorest person in the world? Well, he has no value. <laughs> they can't find it. <laughs> so, you know, but they know who is what? Richest person in the world. But the person who has nothing, al muflis they cannot recognize him. Because... This is what we are told about what is materialistic. This is the love for wealth. The love and desire for wealth. To hubbun al mala hubban jama'a. That's one. And then it says, akhlada. Mala hu akhlada. That they want to safeguard this wealth. And then they want to what? Vie with wealth. Hatta zurutumul maqabir. Until they reach the grave. Then you get to realize that all this vying, all this competition comes to an end. All the wealth comes to an end. It has no benefit. And, you know, we look at it and we see even in our own society that people who had wealth and sports cars and all kinds of things, they die and what happened? It remained right there. 
Somebody takes it over and make use of it. And that's the end of how it happens. So, ثُمَّ لَا تُسْأَلُنَّ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ عَنِ النَّعِيمِ Quran tells us that one day in this same surah Takathur that you'll be questioned about these pleasures that you have, that you have enjoying. What is the objective of this material world? When you look at these three ayats of Quran, from what the Quran is telling us, that we see what the world is doing to us and to our children. Now, I'm not telling us to curse the world, you know, or to go and live in somewhere. As I said, I show you that we needed what? We need the world instinctly to what? Live and survive. That Allah gave us those natural things. But when it becomes beyond natural and we take it for other than what the purpose is, then it becomes materialistic. And then we become people of show and fashion. So the condition of our youths in regard to materialism is a direct result of our inculcating this type of knowledge and bombardment of the commercial and economic system in our everyday life. They see this, they live this, they feel this, they understand this. Just as you have a vehicle or a car, don't you think your son would want a vehicle or a car? Just as you have anything in life, they want the same thing. Why? Because we show them that this is what life is about. So if you want to buy four cell phones, eventually your son will want what? Eight cell phones. You know, they don't want four again anymore. They might want something more. Eventually, they will want more than what you have and they want better than what you have because they will always see. In fact, you know, they will compete with us and tell us, well, your phone is outdated. I don't want that kind of phone. This is the kind of phone I want. You know, so they, they don't look at what you have as, you know, like your little me too. That have no value to me. I want something up to par, something on, on, on line with everybody else. So the difference is that when we teach our children, they see but their mind and their ability is beyond that. They are being sold and taught in a different environment that we live in and what their desires are. So what we have shown them, but they are much more desirous than we are because they have learned from us who are the best in terms of loving wealth. Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Ali radiallahu ta'ala said, train your children with a training different from your training because they have been created for a period different from yours. They have been created for a period different from yours. Ali radiallahu ta'ala is telling us that, yes, you think 10 years from now, 20 years from now, the world is going to remain the same? When we look at 20 years in our life prior to what we are living now, and what we are living now, you think it's the same thing? Totally different. So our children, we have to let them know of what and train them for what is to come. Do we know what is to come? Allah knows best. But what we see before us, in other words, the challenge that we face and what we forecast in our thinking and our, our limited knowledge, we should train our children. And I'm not talking about training them skillfully with some secular subject and some secular skills, you know. What I'm talking about is what we are told about by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam prophesies of what we should really warn and train and guard our children to develop their iman, protect themselves from what is to come before them. So what we are seeing as the fitan and the corruption out of materialism today, you know, that is something of a great challenge to us. Because today, even in our own society, many people complain that only certain people are given the wealth of the land. And majority of the people they are still yet suffering. Because just a few people are given majority of that wealth. So we are struggling to make ends meet, to pay economic giants that determine what type of house they will build for us and what type of neighborhoods we should live in, in by the price we would pay. We are now forced to spend very large amounts of money to keep up the economic the economic bombardment that our kind, our kids face. So entertainment, clothing, education, amongst many other things. As they grow older, we spend more. Globally, the children market is worth over $2.5 trillion. That is the value of the world market for children. So our children are being targeted as the market for the Future, that is where the development is going and that is where the, the plans and everything is created. You think these phones were created 
for like us, we just play what? Catch up for a two-year-old child. They what? Understand how to use the phone better than what? Us. And we are what? Still trying to learn some of the apps and some of the different things about the phone. But a two-year-old child could teach you how to use the phone better. In fact, you have some children up to eight months now could use the phone. You say you're crying, just hand them a phone. And they'll be okay. Eight months old, not the bottle anymore, you know. Or pacifier, just give them a phone instead. Because they have that ability to use a phone even at the age of, not even my age, eight months old. This is how far it has become. So, or the equivalent of the entire GDP of what? India, the gross domestic product of India. In the UK alone, they spend around 150 billion annually on children. Regular pocket money and weekend jobs, and look at the history of how things have changed. Give our young people the power of about 12 billion pounds of their own disposable income, but as family units become more flexible and complex, few children receive fixed amounts of weekly pocket money and more get an ad hoc handout as and when they need or want something. Today is not like long time. Long time you give somebody some money, they save it, and when you save for a whole year, then you go and buy a bicycle. Or you buy a shoes. Or you buy something you want for yourself. But today, your, your son reach home or your daughter reach home, Daddy, I feel I had to change the shoes. It's not good again, you know. I want new shoes. Do we go in, let, me, let, me, let me go down the mall in there. Go in the store. See, I would like that one day. How much for that? $5,000. Yep. But with your money, you have no money. You have to take out your money now and spend. Yeah. New phone. Your money. They must save in one cent for that. You know, you have to what? You know, you know a long time saving $10 and $5 and put it in a little jar and adding it up. No. Now it's totally different. Why? Because the system and demands to grow a child today, in other words, the materialistic aspect of growing the child is much more today. The education cost is high. The, the we call it the freelancing life, you know, the phone, the this, the that, and every type of comfort you want to give them is much more than long ago. In fact, long ago, how much money you think parents used to give their children to buy all kinds of things like that. They never had things like that in the first place. Probably had to roll out old rim somewhere down the road. Or a tire or something for sports, entertainment. You tell a child to give them a bicycle, old, old bicycle rim to roll along the road. You think they don't want to beat you with it? <laughs> you know, nobody going to roll out rim today. <laughs> but those are things of what? The past. So the cost of that is no longer here today. What we're looking at is how materialistically what it cost to um, you know, even do that even today. Some, you know, you, you get married to somebody, you tell them, well, you go in the hospital, you can make the baby in the hospital. They say, no, I want to go in a nursing home. You say, every child costs you about thirty to $40,000. <laughs> but, you know, the cost starts somewhere, even from the nursing home, and goes all the way till they reach what? The age of getting married. And when they want to get married, you know, they don't want to get married like you with a, you know, whether you use that old plate or old, old cup or milk cup to use in your big wedding. Your, your marriage, the time of your marriage, they want what? Some big hall and some kind of fancy kind of thing and costing you what? A couple hundred thousand dollars for them to marry for two weeks. So, you know, this is, this is what materialism has brought our lifestyle to. Now, we're not condemning our, you don't, don't think I'm trying to condemn here. I'm trying to let first understand the mentality, the system that has put us, you know, that even the a simple thing as to have a marriage, a wedding day, you have to have a planner who plans. You have to pay them a set of money to plan. And a whole set of different things. You know, materialistically, the mentality of the human being and the trend that we see is that if you have to belong, you have to have all these things. The fact is that Rasul Salaam tells us that a marriage, we know a simple marriage is the most rewarding of marriages. A simple life is the best life. A simple life is the best life. But to have a simple life, people would look at you as though you what? Like he, you know, he's a real cheap fella. He don't have to spend money. You know, that's that how we they look at people. Now, I know, I'm not saying that they don't really have genuinely cheap people. Eh? They have people who are genuinely cheap and they're really cheap. But to live a simple life, 
doesn't mean being what? Cheap. It means being simple. It doesn't mean being what? Extravagant, wasting, and, and showing israf. We are, we, are, we are warned in the Quran. Kulu washrabu wala tusrifu. Eat and drink and do not what? Waste and be extravagant. That is the, what the, the Quran also tells us. So materialistically, we are always warned that we should not waste or take things and utilize it or just you know you use things in abundance and in a way that you know that you, you want you really want to eat like it's like a man eating food you know he he can eat half a plate by taking a whole plate and then you throw away half of the food you know that is what extravagance that is because your eye full and not your what your belly because your belly can't take no more anymore so better really best to really feed your eye after it might make a difference. Here, you know, at the end of the day, when we look at what has been contributed in society today from this need, we could tell ourselves, yet adults, whether teachers, politicians, NGOs, or parents, find it hard to put their finger on the exactly what the concern is and why we are so worried. There is often the risk of golden ageism. You know, reaching a stage well, we reach at the ideal perfected portion in life. Now life is like this. We cannot go lower than this. In other words, when you reach this stage in life that your son or your daughter and your family is telling you, I don't like that kind of life. And I see where you won't plan to live there. That is for somebody in the past. I can't live that life. In other words, you get married to someone and you bring them in your house and you say, well, you know, you have to make a roti, cook some food. Wash some dishes. I never do that at my father's house. Excuse me. I'm not doing that here. You know? <laughs> nice things are the past. <laughs> you know? Then what? Then what? Then what is life? What is the end of it? You know, this is what we have reached in terms of those type of material thinking. Advertising, after all, is hardly new. But today in the world, there are schools which are sponsored by companies that, like soft drink companies and so on and where drinking a soda on school premises would merit a suspension in certain situations now there are channels which broadcast educational programs in schools but marketing messages of for soft drink and confectionaries pumped through the sound system most of these you know would agree that the use of Educational space for such commercial targeting of young people is undesirable. And many, many cartoons today and many, many shows that what you'll call is those channels that show all these shows. What do you think they market? You think you know what they market and these shows after at every ad? Dollies for sale. Fancy dollies for sale. Then they will market, you know, whatever type of little toy this they want to sell, or bicycle, or roller skates, or cars, or trams, or you know, Nintendo set or I, I, I want to call those games again, let's play some kind of game they play. All the fancy type of games they have, you know what they play. All these things they advertise during these ads so that your children will say, I want this, I want this, and I want this. And for ladies, programs, and, and whatever types of channels they would watch, they will advertise all the kitchen thing, all the washing machines, all the different types of things that they would want for the household. So you know that a different trend of people. If fellas watching a sports game, Alcohol, this, that, cars, this, that. So they target every group of people for their own types of desires. You know, that is a trend that is what? The norm for advertising in any type of business for marketing. And marketing is a, a, a situation in the world today that we have. So when we look at it, we look at society, you know, they're funded and they look towards marketing and this materialism. So materialism is that belief that material possessions and physical comfort are more important than spiritual values. We understand that? Material possessions are, and physical comforts, they are more valuable than spiritual values. And that is norm today. That is natural in our society today. A time would come, for example, for a person to pray. And they'll still be doing what? Washing the car. 
Because they feel that washing the car has more value than the prayer. Our children will be involved in some type of game. And they will never stop this game because they find that this is what? Connected to them materially and they, are, and they will leave out prayer. This is when physical comfort, physical comfort and the material comfort, the possession of it has a stronger value over spiritual value. And hence, materialism takes over the minds and body of this individual. This is what society is. If we cannot see that a society has been affected materially, then something is wrong. You know, that you see people like this and they say, well, no, I still religious or no? I just pray once a year. No, that's okay. You can pray once a year. But the thing is, where is your real sense of focus? You know, all of the wealth that you have, have you, while you eat your fancy meals every day, three times a day, have you ever thought of people who are starving around you? Or you say, well, nobody does starve in this country. You know, we think like that. Some people say, well, there's nobody who poor in Trinidad. Trinidad rich. People think like that. You know, they look at themselves. We look at ourselves that, well, since I go like this, everybody go the same way. And then nobody what? Looks for no one. This is the extent to which materialism has reached into our society. This is the extent that we ignore and our children are trained to also ignore. So the fact is that when you see a community that lacks that spiritual connection and attaches itself to the material, physical comforts and to the material possessions as showing that that is success, then you know that there's a spiritual failure amongst us. So, inshallah, we'll continue in the conclusion of this topic in the next class, inshallah, on our youths and ourselves in terms of the challenges that we face in the modern world and the material possessions we have around us. Let's make dua, inshallah. Allahumma ameen. Allahumma ta salam wa minka salam tabarakta ya dal jalali wa ikram. Allahumma salli ala sayyidina wa shafi'ina. وحبيبنا ومولانا محمد بارك وسلم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار فسبحان ربك رب العزة أما يسفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين إني ألقى الإناس في صومي وصلاتي ودعائي للرحمن وجميع الطاعات Oh,